Hi everybody, uh, my name is Gordon Darcy, I'm a wildlife artist and I'm going to show you how to draw wildlife uh, using very simple shapes um, and developing them into pictures. Um, I'm going to show you first of all some of the equipment you're going to need. Uh, if you look at this little table on the right hand side, uh, you can see a, sketch, a sketchbook like this, plenty of pages, white pages. Um, and a couple of pencils, one which is a HB which draws rather lightly and a 4B which draws heavily. But you can use one pencil if you've only got one pencil and lean lightly and lean heavily with it. Um, that's the basic equipment for colouring in. Crayons are great. Um, if you're more sophisticated you can use watercolours. I use these um, crayons here which are artist crayons or artist pastels. And I break them into little pieces. You can see them here. Um, and I use those on a flip chart uh, to demonstrate uh, in big scale uh, the kind of work <coughs> that we'll do together. Um, I just want to show you this book, my uh, nature art book. Uh, you may look at it here, nature art, nurture, do you get it? Um, so 24 is the page I had in mind uh, where you can get a, an idea of the shapes the starter shapes that I use. <coughs> you can see how you use ovals and, and circles to develop them into birds. And I use the same idea, only maybe with cashew shape, cashew nut shapes for, for mammals. And um, lots and lots of examples there. If we skip through to page uh, 87, I think it is, uh, you can see how you can develop these <clears throat> ovals into bird shapes and then colour them in afterwards. Those are coloured in with pencils, coloured pencils. So that's just an example of how I go about what I do. Now, let's get started then. Uh, the birds I'm going to do today are the swallows. Um, many people think that there's only one swallow, but in fact we've got three different kinds of swallows. Um, the swallow that comes um, and brings the, the spring and the summer with it and two others which aren't so common. Uh, one is called the house martin that lives around houses and makes its nest under the eaves of houses and a sand martin which is often found in sand dunes or on river banks and flits over the river catching insects. So we'll draw the three together for comparison's sake and you'll see how I'm going to go about this. I'm going to use the oval starter shape. So in the middle here I'll make the swallow, a very narrow oval like that and a, more of a circle for its head. And on the top here, we'll do a smaller oval. Uh, that, that's going to be the sand marking. And down here, I'll do the same smaller oval and the head. So, how do we develop these into birds? You can see they're quite light. And that's the idea of the light pencil, the HB pencil to start with. So, let's use the middle one and we'll make it into the swallow. And I'll go heavy now and you'll be able to see the detail. See it's got a very small beak, quite a wide gape. That means it can open its beak very wide to catch insects. Around here for its head. There's the eye with a white spot on the top to make it look alive. Down here onto its chin. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see now that it's got much darker and much more distinct. I'm going to move bring the wing up like this, sweep it back, rather like a shark's fin. Do the same down here. So those are the swallow's wings, very pointed. Like all migrant birds, it's got long feathers on his wings. A few feathers here. And then we'll get the tail. It's got a long forked tail. So there's the outline of our swallow. <clears throat> I'll put a few lines here to show the feathers on his wings. Like so. And <clears throat> I'm going to do the house martin next because it's rather like a swallow, except that instead of having a complete dark back, it's got a little white spot over his tail. I'll have to tuck its wing in under, uh, underneath the swallows. So we'll start off again with the small beak, insect catching beak, 
There's the eye. There we go, there's the head. So, swept back wing like so. And the other swept back wing here, I'll have to, as I said, tuck in underneath this wing. So you can see it's in the background. Around here. And there's the fork tail, but look at the fork. It's a much smaller fork than the swallow's. It hasn't got the long streamers that the swallow has. And you know the sand martin at the bottom here is slightly smaller than the, the house martin, has the same tiny beak. There's the eye, the white spot. Swept back wings. Go. And slightly forked tail, like so. So there's our three birds. All three are called generically swallows, uh, but that's the real swallow that we all know. The farm log in Irish. Uh, this guy here is called the uh, Gowlan uh, Binna, the house martin. And this one, Gowlan Ganav. Gowlan just means a forked tail. Ganav is the word for sand. So let's put some colour on now that we have the outlines. And I'm going to use my pastels right here in front of me. We'll do the swallow first. It's got this deep purpley blue back. You need to be pretty close to it to see that, of course. So I'll just go over it like this. And we'll try and get it to go on fairly quickly. Because we don't want to... We're only sketching, really. There we go. We'll try and keep it inside the lines. That's the hardest part when you're doing things quickly. You've got to make sure that you don't stray beyond the lines, otherwise it looks very untidy. There's the patch under the eye. And while I'm here, I might as well do the, the house marking as well, because it's got the same basic colour. Dark blue, purpley blue on the back, like so. And down the wing right down to there. The important thing of course is to to leave the white spot over its tail. That's a diagnostic feature, what bird watchers would call a diagnostic feature. Something that gives it away as far as identification is concerned. So there we go. Now the wing feathers are darker so I've got a black here that I can use for that. I'm just going to go, so we'll do the tail first of all. Long black lines like that to demonstrate the tail. And then we do this wing here. There we go. Down like that. So I'm going to continue here with the darkening of the wing feathers. Blacken them in here like this. I did some blackening down there too. I'm trying to keep the crayon marks inside the lines. It's one of the hardest things to do here. Now I can put some, pronounce these wing feathers a bit more than they were. So there we go, it looks like it's flying now. And we'll do the same with the house martin up here. His black light feathers as well, just like that. These crayons are quite waxy so I need to lean heavily to make the mark. You can see in here too. So we'll put some feathers on these, like so. Neaten that down a little bit along the edge. There we go. And here's one of the critical parts of this drawing. I have to show up the white rump very clearly, because that's a distinguishing feature this white patch above the tail. Put a little bit of black in here as well to darken down the cheek, showing that sharp demarcation between the, the, the dark blue top and the white chin. Um, what about a little bit of grey in here to pick up on the to pick up on the 
lack of sun getting in there and some flesh color here okay now one of the things that people often overlook with the swallow is the red top to its head just in there and a red chin you have to be fairly close to see those now but they are distinguishing features of the swallow just bring a bit more blue in there like that and a touch of pink or flesh color in there underneath so the last one we've left to do here is the sand martin brown on his back not blue actually that's very yellow brown i should do something a little bit darker than that so let's mix it with uh, with this yeah that's more like the color there now cap on top of its head as well and right down onto the tail so again I'm trying to keep these as neat as possible so right underneath now we've got that brown on top so let's darken in the flight feathers again like we did with the others You can see there's no white rump here compared with the uh, with the house martin. So let me continue with these lines here to show the flight feathers. So apart from a little brown band across the front here, that's really the only difference in the underparts of the uh, sand martin. So. The last thing I want to mention to you about these three birds is where they nest because that is very significant. Just putting a bit more blue on this to darken it down. Clearer there and on this one too. Okay, so where do they nest? Well, the swallow always nests underneath the roof in a barn or in an old mill or situation like that often making us nest on the rafters or between the rafters and the purlins makes a beautiful nest of mud and straw this, this bird on the other hand the house martin makes its nest on the outside of a house usually under the eave of the house with little uh, bricks of mud that it collects from puddles and using its own saliva um, arranges them almost like a block worker would in, in rows until it makes a neat cup underneath the uh, the eave of the house and that's where it raises its young. Uh, the sand martin makes a nest, a burrowed nest, in the bank of a river usually or in the sand dune. Uh, it burrows in about oh, maybe two or three feet and lays its eggs at the end of the, the tunnel. So they nest in completely different places and they're really uh, members of the, of, of the swallow family even though they're quite different in their own way. So I often call them sky birds. So let's put a bit of sky behind them just to finish off with so you can see the habitat in which they're found. Like that. So there you have it. Our three swallows. And I put uh, the writing on them as well, I suppose. Uh, the house martin up here. House martin. Swallow. And the sand martin. There you go.